Hey, what is going on everybody? In this video, or I should say in this video series, we're gonna be creating an awesome calculator. Now this isn't gonna be like every other calculator you've seen on YouTube. This one has a lot more functions built into it. I mean, just look at this. So we can do things like three times, we can throw in a few parentheses, that divided by six, and then we can cube this because why not? And we'll times this by 999. Hit enter, we get a value for this. But one other awesome thing that we can do with this is if we just put in a bunch of numbers here, we also get scientific notation as well. So if you think this is something that you'd like to make, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when I upload a new video in this series. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to make your way over to Android Studio. If this doesn't look familiar to you, be sure to check out the introduction to Android Studio video I made a while back. But to start off, I'm just gonna get rid of this hello world and keep my constraint layout. And then we're gonna need a container or a layout, I should say. And I'm thinking the table layout will be good because I wanna constrain all of our buttons for our calculator within another layout. So I'm gonna use the table layout for this so we can arrange it into rows and columns. So if I throw this out onto the scene, we could come over and throw a bunch of buttons into our table layout. And you see it had already populated it with a bunch of rows. I'm just gonna take a bunch of buttons and throw them in here. All right, so I finally placed all the buttons within the table layout. And the reason I chose the table layout was because I wanna keep each button or view within their respective row or column. And I don't want them to be able to shift whenever we change devices. So if I make something for the Pixel 2, I want it to be the same for the Pixel 3. I don't want them to get rearranged or anything. So now if we come over to the component tree, I'm sure you've noticed we have a ton of warnings. If we hover over it, you'll see that the first warning that Android Studio wants us to fix is that the button should be borderless. I'm not really worried about that right now. That's more of a style thing. Android likes to keep the apps that are deployed to the Google Play Store uniform. And whenever you're placing a button within here, they're normally borderless. But the warning that I am concerned about right now is this hard-coded text that actually defines the text that is displayed on the button. It's hard-coded in here and it shouldn't be. So if we come over to our strings.xml, this is within the resource folder, values, and then strings.xml. I wanna open this up and then within here, I wanna define each string that should be displayed on the individual buttons. So you'll see that the default is to just hard-coded into the text variable, but we're gonna use a string reference rather than hard-coding it in there. So I'm just gonna type out all the strings that we're gonna use for our buttons, and we're gonna give them names so we can reference them. So I'm gonna do things like one, and then I'm gonna place in a one. So then we'll have the button one. And then I'll do one for two, three, four, and so on. So I'll come back once I get all these typed in. All right, so I finished typing out all the strings. I did zero all the way up to nine, and then I did clear exponent parentheses. We got the basic math operations, a plus minus, point, and equals. And then I also decided to throw in a backspace because I think it'd be nice to be able to edit. I know when we have some of those really simple like $1 calculators, you have to clear everything, and that's really annoying. So now that we have all of our string variables defined within our string resource, we're gonna actually go over to our activity main.xml and we're gonna throw in the values for each of our buttons now. So the way we go about doing that is by referencing the string resource and then passing in the name of that string. So we can type in at string, which allows us to access the variables within the string resource, forward slash, whatever the name you gave for the first button. I want the first button to be a clear and I gave that a name of clear. We're gonna hit enter. And now if we come over to our project, I'm gonna change this over to design and I'll zoom in for you guys. You can see that the first button now changed to a C. And if we come back over to the strings resource, you can see that the clear, our string that I defined for it was a capital C. So I'm gonna go through all of the buttons and give them their names and then I'll come back. All right, so while I was adding in all the strings, I realized I added 20 strings, but only defined 16 buttons. So we're gonna need to add in another table row with four more buttons. The way we do that is heading over to the layouts, coming down to table row, and then we can place that within our table layout to add another row. And then within this row, all we gotta do is drag in four more buttons. So the same exact way that we did it in the beginning. And we should be good to go. I'm gonna go back and start defining the rest of the buttons and then I'll come back. All 
All right, so I finally got done defining all of the text for each of our individual buttons. And before we move on any further, I think I should tell you guys how I got this division and multiplication symbol. I used alt codes to get those. And if you're not sure what those are, all you have to do is type in Google alt codes math symbols. And if you're not familiar with these, I would look into it. They're really cool and they can make your programs look a little bit better. So I came down and found this website and it's just alt codes for math symbols. And the way these work is you hold down the alt key and then type in the following number. So if you wanted the times symbol, all you do is hold down the alt key plus and you'll type in 0215 and then this symbol will pop up. So I'm just gonna pull this away. And then the next thing we gotta do, it's kind of boring, but we gotta define IDs for each button. So if you come up to this clear button that we define, you see the ID is just button. That's not really descriptive. We're not gonna be able to, you know, figure out which button that is. So I'm gonna go through each of these buttons and give them an ID. And I'm probably just gonna use the same name that I use for the string. So the clear button, I'm probably just gonna give it an ID of clear. Make things a little bit simpler. So I'll come back once I get all the IDs set up for each button. All right, so I got that all finished. And what I ended up doing was tacking on BTN for the IDs so I can distinguish between the buttons and the strings a little bit better. So the reason we defined an ID for each of our buttons is because when we start writing our code in our main.java file, the IDs will allow us to add unique functionality to each and every individual button. Without the IDs, we'll never be able to reference specifically the clear button and allow it to clear the screen. All right, so I think the next task is getting rid of this borderless error. We're gonna open up the XML for this by going up to the top right-hand corner and then I'm gonna click this middle button so we can see both the design and the XML. So this table layout is highlighted red because we haven't added any constraints to it yet. Right now, I just wanna get rid of this borderless button problem. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna reference the style resource. So if we come over to our resources folder, our values, we have this styles.xml. Right, and within here we store a bunch of colors and like themes and all the accents. This is where you store all of that stuff. But there's actually a few things that we that are stored within there that we can reference to make our buttons borderless. So what we're gonna do is type in style because this is an attribute associated to our button. And then you can see the very first one, this style widget.app compact button borderless. If we hit enter, this will remove our button error. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this for each and every button. All right, so now that we added that, you might be thinking to yourself, well, this looks even worse than what we had before. But trust me, as this tutorial keeps going, the buttons will look a lot better. We're gonna add some styles to them. It'll be good. So now the next task is to fix this error. So if we go back to our design by clicking the design tab in the top right hand corner, we'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. Then what we're gonna wanna do next is fix this error right here. So it says the view is not constrained. The reason that's a problem is because each view within our design should have some form of a constraint. The reason we're not getting this error for our buttons is because they're constrained to the table row and this table row is constrained to the table layout. But our table layout, it's just kind of floating around. He has no constraints, he's just kind of there. So I'm gonna zoom back out and I'm gonna click the table row. Then I'm gonna come over to the attributes panel and here I'm gonna change the layout width and height. Instead of having a fixed value, I want this to wrap the content. This will just make it so we can add constraints just a little bit easier. Now you can see that we actually have access to this little bubble on the side. I'm gonna take this guy and drag him all the way down to the bottom of the screen. And now before I add a top constraint, we're actually gonna need a widget that's able to display our text. So I'm gonna come over to text in the palette and then I'm gonna drag out a text view. This text view, I'm gonna add a constraint to the top and then left and right constraints. If I can grab that guy. And then our table layout, I wanna add a constraint to the bottom of our text view. All right, so now if you're looking at our table layout, you'll notice that this thing's kinda of lopsided. He's not exactly centered within our constraint layout. So if we click our 
table layout, we select that, come back over to our attributes panel, you'll notice the layout width is set to wrap content. Now when this is set to wrap content, it's just going to match the width of whatever's within that table layout. But we don't want it to match the width of whatever's in the table layout. We want it to match the width of our constraint layout, which in this case is our parent. So we can type in match parent. And now the width of our table layout will be the same exact size or I should say the same exact width as our constraint layout. This will allow us to deploy our app onto different Android devices because this width will constantly change with the screen size and that'll allow our buttons to also change. So what Match Parent is gonna essentially do is allow us to keep our app looking the same on different Android devices. The next thing we're gonna have to do is resize our buttons with the size of the screen. We already have our table layout resizing, but our buttons are gonna be fixed. The way we do that is by coming over to our XML. So if we go over to the top right hand corner, we can click the middle button again, and now we'll be able to view the XML and our design. But I think I'm gonna swap over to Blueprint to help us see this a little bit better. And the way we're gonna make our button scale with the size of our screen is by assigning it a layout weight. Now, what is a layout weight? It's essentially a value that assigns some sort of precedence onto the size of the view, or in our case, our buttons. So we're gonna add a weight to all of our buttons. We're just gonna look at the first row for now, because I wanna show you guys what it looks like when we assign different values to our weights. So we're gonna type in Android colon layout underscore weight. And then I'm just gonna give each one of these a value of one for now. But if we take a look over at the blueprint, you can already see that our clear button got bigger. So if we copy this, come down to the next button, hit enter, you can watch these two change. And then if we watch the next one, and then we'll place this one in there. And now you'll see that they're all the exact same size. So what happens if I were to change this first button, if I gave it a weight of two, you're gonna actually see it increases a little bit. That's because it has more precedence on the amount of space given to those four views within that row. So if I assign a greater weight, it's gonna take up more space with whatever's available to it. So if I give it a value of like 10, it's gonna get even bigger. Now what you're gonna to have to do is assign a weight value for each of your buttons. And in our case, we want each weight for our views to be exactly the same, so they're all the same size. So I'm gonna go through, add weights for each of our buttons, and then I'll come back. All right, so I just added all the weights to our buttons. And then another thing that we have to do is change the layout width. Instead of wrap content, it's just a standard to type in zero DP for that. And we're gonna go through all of them and give them a value of zero DP. All right, now that we added all of that, our button should be able to resize with the size of our screen and be uniform throughout all Android devices. All right, so we're looking pretty good, almost done. I'm gonna go back to the original view and then let's take a look at the design. Not too much to look at. So I just wanna make this look a little bit nicer, the table layout. So if we come back over to our attributes panel, I'm gonna increase this value down to 100, or actually what I think we wanted, let's set this to like 95. That way it's a little bit off the ground and towards the bottom. And then our text view, I'd like this to be, I don't know, let's give it a value of 30. That way it's always 30 DP from the top. And now we need to add one more button for our backspace. So I'm gonna go back over to the palette, click buttons, drag another one in. And then I'm gonna give a constraint for the left and right. And then I'm gonna constrain it to the table layout as well. I'm gonna drag this all the way over to the right. And then we're gonna have to make this guy borderless. And then we have to do a few things with the text view and then we're all done. So the text view, just like with the buttons, we have hard-coded text, we don't want that, so we can come back over to our strings, and then we can define a new string for this. So if we type in string, we can give it a name, we're gonna call it display, close that, and then we can just say enter in a value. So now if we come back to our activity, we can reference our string resource, string forward slash display, so now that'll be enter a value. 
So we have no more warnings for this. We need to set a value for this button, but I believe in our strings resource, we already did a backspace for this. And the reason why I made this an empty string is because I want to use an icon instead of word. So I just made it blank. So I go at string forward slash backspace, and then that'll just be nothing. And then we're going to make this borderless. And then I believe we're done for now. I'm going to do this real quick. Scroll all the way down. Here's our new button. And then I'm going to just throw this in right here. And now he matches all the other ones, although we can't really see him. So this is when the blueprint comes in handy. Okay, so we're finally done setting up the layout of our app. The layout should resize to fit any Android phone, but we haven't really tested that yet because we can't see our buttons. I was hoping to get to that in this video, but I think it'd be better if we did a more in-depth video on how to style your buttons because it is so prevalent within Android apps. If you made it this far, thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.